<laughs> oh, it is after oh, almost 7.20 a.m. I've just gotten in the door from the last day of the Toronto After Dark Film Festival. And continuing on with my 31 days of horror coverage, we've got two films. The first one is called Cheap Thrills. Oh, excuse me, from uh, director E.L. Katz. Um, this is a film essentially about a guy who's down on his luck. He's having problems paying his bills, and he gets an eviction notice, and then he loses his job due to downsizing. Um, and while wallowing in his sorrows at the bar, he runs into an old friend, um, essentially from way back in school. And, uh, the two of them meet, uh, a couple in the bar who are apparently very wealthy and are slumming it and are having fun because, uh, the female is having her birthday and, uh, they've decided to, um, essentially play some contests or, or, you know, races, dares, um, in order to, uh, um, enjoy their evening. Um, so the two guys get involved with them and, um, start doing some crazy stuff for money. Um... Eventually things get out of hand and it progresses and gets starts getting quite violent and uh, very, very, very gross and disgusting. Um, uh, essentially, the, the the film is a it's a uh, it's a look at the the divide between the the haves and have-nots the. Um, the what will you do for your family um, when the chips are down the um, you know how far will you go uh, type thing and just how um, diabolical <laughs> the upper class can be uh, when given the opportunity um, the film works um, probably a lot better than most would expect um, now, because of the extreme amounts of gore and, and disgusting, um, this film is not for most. Um, don't get me wrong, uh, it's it's pretty, it looks good, and the acting is, is really good, but unless you like seeing people do some very hardcore outlandish things, I'm not talking jackass here, I'm talking you know, beyond that, you know, times, you know, 100, and, um, yeah, so, unless that's something you, you, you have no problem, and you want to check out, um, I would, I would stay away, but, for those of you who are into that, and are, you know, all over watching it, uh, Cheap Trails is actually quite good, um, the film stays on track it stays on message and plays out the story without going off on tangents a lot of films that are essentially this, this similar or the same story have a tendency to add in other elements to make the film be a bit more than what it you know just the standard um well dare game if you will um and unfortunately that that often hinders them um, there's just too much in those films. The the viewers get lost, and even the story tends to be a little convoluted. Cheap thrills uh, stays away from that. It is direct and to the point, and that's where I think the um, film truly shines. I do think the curve of the dares is a little off, askew, if you will. It's it's you know small dare, small dare, small dare, medium dare, big dare, really big dare is what it is. It's very exponential. And I would have liked a little bit more of a gradual um, progression um, as such. 
but uh, outside of that, um, it's it's pretty solid for what it is. Um, the second film is a film uh, called Big Bad Wolves. It was the closing gala film, and that's uh, let's see, let me see if I can pronounce this. Directed by Aharon Keshales and Navot Papushado. Uh, it's an Israeli film, and it's actually in contention to be the film that Israel puts forth uh, as their nomination for the Academy Awards. Um, in fact, uh, Quentin Tarantino has apparently said so far it's his favorite film of the year. Now, that being said, um, uh, I wasn't really feeling it. Um, the film looks good. Uh, the acting is is really really good, um, but I'll give you a rundown of essentially the basic story. Um, there are little girls who are being abducted and killed and raped, and um, there is one suspect, and uh, but they don't really have any proof. They don't have any evidence. Um, and so the cops at first pick him up and decide to try and beat a confession out of him and information out of him. Um, this gets stopped and, uh, basically people get in trouble because of it. The rapist is able to um, kill uh, the girl who he currently had and leaves her body in the park and uh, her father decides to take uh, justice into his own hands and he kidnaps this uh, individual and decides he's going to do his own form of torture and try and get uh, you know, answers out of him, and essentially he's looking for the whereabouts of his daughter's head, um, because this killer, um, takes, beheads all of his victims, and leaves the bodies, but, uh, puts the head somewhere else. Um, on the surface, it, it seems like a great idea. Now, my problem with the film is that I'm not exactly sure what the filmmakers are trying to do. Um, you've got this guy who's suspected of being the pedophile, but the only evidence pointing to him, and I mean only evidence, is a girl who th thinks that he looks like a guy, you know, she saw. Um, they don't really go into details about it, but that's the only thing that's mentioned. Um, so that's the only thing essentially linking him to these crimes, but everybody, um, be it the cop, um, and there's one cop in particular who's who's on the case, or the uh, father of the girl, they all seem to take that as being all they need, and they um, essentially torture him. So. Is the film about the, you know, it's not about, it, it's not about solving the mystery as you know, the, you know, the murder or the mystery or anything as you might expect from this type of film. Um, and that's where a lot of people get lost on it because that's what they're looking for, but that doesn't really happen. Um, are you supposed to side with the guy the victim or the, the pedophile see that's the whole thing, is he victim, is he pedophile um, uh, do you side with him because at no point in the film does he actually admit to it, even though he's going through all this torture he's putting through a, a, uh, telling everybody and, and you know that it, it, he, they, he didn't do it, he doesn't know what they're talking about um, short of what, you know, obviously what's in the news um, do you side with the, the cop and the father who are doing this torture um I kind of get the impression that you're supposed to think that 
the pedophile victim is the person you're rooting for um, and that the police officer and the father are essentially the bad guys in this film but at the same time the film continually gives all these little hints as to where the, the you know the the story's going and seems to indicate that this person really is the um, pedophile murderer and so much so that early on in the film I had already pegged him as this this pedophile thing so I didn't for me, that just ended up being confusing for me so you've got these two guys that have really no evidence whatsoever torturing somebody you have the person they're torturing in my mind being the evil person but at no point is he admitting to it and in fact he's being very so convincing that he isn't the pedophile murderer that the cop eventually changes his mind and actually thinks that he is telling the truth and yeah and this is this is where I I, I I personally am getting lost with the film because I'm not quite sure as to what the direction the filmmakers were going for. You can't really feel for the cop and the father because they're doing some pretty horrendous things. I couldn't feel for the pedophile murderer got character because in my mind everything seemed to indicate, even though there was, you know, nothing to the characters in the film but from what we're shown uh, seems to indicate that he is the pedophile murderer whether he is or isn't so through most of this film I'm looking at it going well I none of these characters are good and I can't really look at it as a, a character development piece because the only character that really has any development would be the the cop um, who goes from you know saying this guy is the pedophile murderer to siding with the pedophile pedophile murderer character um, and you know believing him to eventually um, going back to you know thinking he was the killer and so he's the only one who has any real arc um, the father is essentially he's just one thing I don't you know, he's going to kill, yes, it's a selfish extent, he's going to kill this guy, um, no matter what, and the murderer pedophile is essentially just, he's always uh, claiming to be the innocent, so, nobody else seems to have any development, <laughs> so it's not a character development piece, because the cop, the only one who has any development, spends a good portion of the film just gagged, where he's no longer even really in the picture, short of as a supporting role. Um, so I, I, I rule out just a character development piece. The only thing I could get to was it just seems like this is a a film about the the desperation of people and the extent that they will go to um, to 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 get revenge uh, solve a murder find out information you know come get closure um, but again that's that, that doesn't really play out either short of the fact that they're torturing this guy so yeah I wasn't I wasn't a, the biggest fan of Big Bad Wolves. I I was kind of hoping it would have been better. It's also kind of slow. Um, there was a lot of uh, eyes shut during the film, um, and there's a ton of dialogue, and it's really weird. Um, the filmmakers decided to add in some some humor in order to play off of this otherwise graphic torture um, that's going on, and at times it feels very cartoonish in its delivery um, but it always seems to be a little out of place um, 
I understand, you know, the reason for doing it. Otherwise, it would be a very, very, very dark movie that probably wouldn't cater much to a wider audience. Um, but by throwing in the, the comedy and the lighter side of it, um, you can open up um, to people who wouldn't necessarily just go in to watch a torture movie. Um, but essentially, that's that's what it is. It's a, it's a movie about torture. There's people going and torturing, and um, yes, there's other people involved, and yes, they do say some stuff, but nothing really develops from uh, any of the uh, actual dialogue taking place. So, yeah, Toronto After Dark 2013 is over, and uh, I need to get some sleep. So, I will uh, say good night for now and uh, see you in the next one.